Here's the promised walkthrough of the 2004 E350 Econoline. Standard length, standard roof, all that kind of thing. Uh, we are not quite at final, haven't really gotten to external stuff, but uh, still can walk it through. The idea is a van that you can take to the beach and not worry about rust and things. So we have a little bit of some door damage here, some flaking paint, things like that. We'll clean that up a little bit. Um, probably do some hubcaps, things like that to dress it up. I don't know that we'll get into lifts and fancy tires, we'll have to see. But first we'll just do a walk around. We have our obligatory stickers. I do have fancy hubcaps on this side because the other two fell off. But as you can see, we've gone with a kind of utility roof rack. Um, we did splurge for the rooftop air conditioning, RV air conditioning. It's AC only. Um, here in Southeast Texas, it's pretty much essential for survival. So um, we'll actually start at the back here. A few things left to do, especially on the, the doors. We did do wood finish on this door. We'll do the same on all the other ones, as well as a little bit of cabinet work and things to do on, on making them more functional. But uh, some particular design elements here. One is this really deep garage access there, and that's for uh, electric scooters, foldable electric scooters. So that's built to spec, and they'll come right to the, the very edge. Um, this is a just kind of a good mid-level shelf. Um, probably one of the more useful parts for the, the garage space. Um, back here we have a cabinet that passes through to our kitchen cabinets as well as the back of the drawers. Um, we have a little bit of space for a power strip here and a decent amount of space left underneath the rear bed. Uh, left this open so that we can put folding beach chairs and that kind of thing through. Um, wanted that extra length where appropriate. Um, this is also where probably our jackery will go when we're boondocking. Um, some easy just plug-in conversion. Uh, of course we won't run the, the air conditioning unit off of that, but um, some of this lesser stuff. Um, I did a wrong side electrical connection just because I already had to leave this area open for the jack, so it seemed like a much more utilitarian spot than all of the HVAC in this corner. We did leave the, the factory air in this back corner. Um, I think we will live to appreciate that, but so far, it's been a, a major pain in the neck. So move into the side doors. Again, we have a little bit of door panel work still to do, but um, really simple curtains. We just used uh, kind of those like cotton beach blanket towel combo things. Bought a six pack of them or something on Amazon. A um, couple things I would like to point out. the this curtain wire stuff, again, an, an Amazon thing, somebody in one of the forums had mentioned it, and it's it's great. It's so versatile. You cut it to length, you thread in these little eyelet jobbies, and uh, it's, it's very discreet, very customizable without a lot of effort, and pretty inexpensive. Uh, one of the other things that we did, if you don't completely trim out your windows, you have all these little, little nubbins that stick out that just have a very unfinished look. So I found some finials that match thread to just make it look intentional and give a little bit less of an opportunity to snag things. So, uh, Moving into the cockpit area, um, I already had that little tray that, that goes onto the steering wheel. Works reasonably well for just kind of somewhere to put things, but um, we kept it. We travel with a pretty small cooler, mostly weekend use, and we eat out a lot. We don't do a lot of, like, we're going into the mountains and we won't be out for a month. So um, you'll see our cooking setup is fairly minimal. Uh, we did do the swivel seat from, I think it was Bling, Bling My Rig or something like that. I could put a, a link below. Um, but this opens up an incredible amount of space. I don't know if you can even appreciate it in the video, but 
um, with the swivel passenger seat and not having to do a curtain across, we have a window shade and side curtains that, that will go in place for actual overnight camping, but keeping this all open um, really brings a, a lot of light and air to this layout. So um, I'm 6'1", my wife is 5'2", and we've had about 15 campers and vans and things through the years and, and have determined that there's no good double bed way to sleep in a camper. So we separated those functions. So she sleeps very comfortably side to side. I say sleeps, we haven't actually had our maiden voyage yet, but uh, there's plenty of room for that. Um, this is a pull-out sofa sleeper and that little cavity right here uh, is to, to allow really enough room to keep this wardrobe cabinet on the far right side. So uh, a little bit, of, there's a storage drawer down here and we'll eventually have a, an opening face on this, but right now that's not the case. Um, when we do have shore power, we have an outlet conveniently located here underneath the bed. But um, this is a pull-out jobby. Um, I don't have my handles yet, but we'll see if this comes out reasonably well. Backrest becomes part of the bed. If you're uh, prone to motion sickness, it's a good time to look away from the camera because this is single cameraman footage with uh, the operator and demonstrator all in one. So let me back up just a little bit. So that's roughly the the bed setup, and this is a. Uh, twin XL. So this is basically 36 by 80 uh, overall. So lots of room for people six foot plus um, to fit into that space. And that was a, a design driver. Um, the little compartment underneath, it's going to be snug, but um, in our testing worked pretty well for somewhere to put your feet if you're, if you're the one sleeping in this bed. Uh, we did leave the the vents open for that rear HVAC. Um, if we actually use that going down the road, then this back cushion would just kind of lay flat here for now. <laughs> this is really a two-handed operation, but let's see if we can do it with just one. Need to cut a little notch back in that corner for the foam. Just wanted to see exactly how this was all going to lay up uh, before I got too zealous with the electric knife. Um, like I said, we did go to a an RV air conditioner, so we have different vents that can open up here. Blows out plenty of air. Um, has a thermostat control over here on the wall, so that will be a when we're boondocking, that's going to be a generator-fed thing. Uh, we don't expect to operate that off a of battery at all. We decided to kind of forego the whole world of solar and battery array. Just added a layer of expense and complexity that we weren't really looking for. Uh, speaking of which, <clears throat> all of our light fixtures are self-contained. So this is a just a puck unit goes onto a magnetic base here. Um, turns on and off very easily. Uh, is dimmable if you just press and hold. I say that like a master here. Come on. Hmm. There we go. Okay, finally dimming. There we go. And back to full brightness. So these are really versatile. Um, I took a fairly bumpy road to where I am and they stayed okay, although we probably will stow these over in the, the side compartments for longer trips. Uh, same thing with these. They're just on a magnetic base. Um, they pull off. Just a little simple power switch. They cycle through 
different hues and all that. Um, again, dimmable, multi-position of all, so this is a good reading light for the bed, or it's a general light, but really kind of like those. We have one of those in our house and enjoy it. Uh, this one doubles as a kitchen light and the, the reading light for my wife's bed. So again, full ability to swivel that over to the sink or back over to the bed. So let's talk a little bit about the kitchen. We we take a very minimal approach to kitchen. Um, we basically use a jet boil every now and then. Um, otherwise, we're not doing elaborate meals. So we just have a little tiny sink here. This is a, um, instead of doing a water pump and any of that, this is a rechargeable unit. It's made to go on a, like a five gallon jug. So it's battery pump, everything all in one, just recharges. Um, we have one at home and we probably go a month of use without having to, to recharge that. So lots of ease there. And that comes down through a, a tube into our water jug below. Um, this is our latrine complete with seal. We don't do any serious work in the van, um, but for things that come up in the night, um, that's helpful. Um, still need to, to punch that drain hose through the floor, but um, really don't intend to, to pour anything other than a little bit of water down that drain. Um, so we're just going to do a gray water under the ground drain and let campgrounds be upset with us or whatever, as the case may be. Um, we had a, a guy who's an apprentice cabinet maker help us out with our cabinetry. He did a really good job. Uh, this is his first van project, so he bemoaned that nothing is straight or plumb in the whole thing, but um, have nice, nice glides. Um, so far, going down the road, uh, unladen. We haven't had any issues with these coming out. They're soft closed and they kind of hold in okay. Um, we were a little concerned about this corner, but this is remarkable. You just, boom, you can fully open that door without interference with the drawers. So that turned out pretty cool. Um, we did add a smoke alarm, um, curtains with uh, with upper and lower wires kind of all throughout. Um, again, power below, power above. So those will either connect to shore power or to our Jackery. Uh, we'll probably also do a dedicated 12 volt um, like charger ports um, as we kind of go down the road a little bit here. Um, I believe that's it. So on our ceiling, we use the, the kind of standard quarter inch tongue and groove stuff that's not super sturdy. I'll show you some imperfections here and there. Um, and we just screwed directly through to the, the ceiling cross members. So pre-drilled and screwed into that. Um, for our sides, uh, once we have the top in place, we started at directly into the, the portion here along the window and then just made some little blocks or in some places uh, contoured a rib that would fit in there. And uh, overall pretty happy with how that turned out. I still have a little bit of work to do on the driver's side. Um, we have some final finish back here. Uh, we'll probably do some roping along this. You know, anywhere that we have some of these little gaps, we'll do this kind of a finish detail. Um, but as you can see from sitting back here on the bench, I mean, there's easy room for three, maybe even four people in here. Cooler fits well between the, the front seats. Um, we really didn't want to encumber our windows any more than necessary. We really liked the, the views and uh, letting a lot of light in. But that is about all I can think about. Um, let's see, laminate floor. Found a corresponding black trim here in the front that really dresses the transition from the the laminate. Um, I did end up replacing my foot well. My old one was kind of cracked and beat up. Um, I should point out the wardrobe as well. So we have a, a VW Westie, and um, we learned from it that hanging clothing is a pretty efficient way to go. So we have room for shoes and different things to throw into the bottom and a hanging bar above, and that, 
this is uh, about 50% more space than our Westy, and we've done about four or five days in the Westy without issue. Um, we kept the speaker and just attached it to the back of the wardrobe. Uh, we kept a 12 volt plug that was kind of in the area and stuck that through as well. Just have a little bit of extra storage here behind the seat. And uh, let's see. Oh, we kept the factory dome light um, so that when you go in and out, there's some some light to get the way. Um, let's see, again to the exterior. Um, the, the AC unit's a little, little bulkier than I might have wanted, but um, to get to low profile ones was gonna cost a bunch of money. Um, this is a, a pretty inexpensive no sight uh, awning straight out of Amazon. Same with the the utility brackets here. Nothing particularly saltwater friendly about um, either of those probably, but we'll see how it goes. So anyway, um, there we go. So we will begin packing up really tonight and Wednesday and uh, have our maiden voyage on Thursday. So. We'll give updates on that.